Today on the Grandland Video Blog, The Odd Squad, Amazing Spider-Man, Big Hero 6, Trinity, and Hellcat. Hey everyone, welcome to the Grandland Video Blog for September 10th, 2008. I always forget the day, it's kind of fun. This is Craig as usual. I hope you enjoyed Brad's first installment, All Secret Invasion Edition. I'm here to talk about some other books you may have seen. Some good, some bad, some ugly. Let's start over here with Hellcat. As you know, I was very on the fence. I hated the first one. I liked the second one. This definitely has found its stride. Number three keeps up the momentum that number two had. It's a very interesting story. It's, uh, it's, it's odd. There's certainly no way around it. It's a very bizarre story, but it's fun. You know, I quite don't quite understand it. Catherine Eminen is doing a very good job. Again, the you know the gratuitous uh, manga influence is gone. We'll talk about that later in Big Hero Six. But it's gone from this book. It's an interesting, quirky Alaskan adventure with Patsy Walker, who's a good character. I loved in the Defenders when I was growing up as a kid. I know I'm a little old. Get it? But uh, but generally speaking. Very good miniseries. I'm very happy to see that it's you know straightened itself out after a very uneven first issue. This is definitely still an interesting read. Not necessarily a must read, but a good solid read. I certainly wouldn't laugh at anyone for buying this, although people will probably laugh at me. <laughs> Next up is Trinity number 15. Kurt Busiek and Mark Bagley. What a waste of time. Are you kidding me? This is great. I like the idea of the weekly comic book, obviously. I read 52. I read the first half of Countdown. Um, maybe I jumped in at the wrong point. I don't get it. Obviously, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman make a grand entrance. Uh, Despero is doing something. Um, there's a backup story. I mean, the book is like, this is not anymore a full comic every week. 52 was a full comic every week. Countdown was a full comic every week. This is half a comic every week. And a backup story about Hawkman. Who cares about Hawkman? Not me. Not Hawk Girl. I don't know. This, I mean, maybe again, maybe I'm missing something. But this is not. This is not what I like. I mean, obviously, three and a half months have passed since it started, but it's it was impenetrable. I could not get into this book. I, I looked at it from the outside. I felt like I was behind a little glass wall, going, "Oh, it looks kind of fun over there." I can't get in. I can't. I don't know what's going on. And there's no way I'm gonna figure it out without reading 15 issues of Trinity. Very disappointing. 52, at least you could at least get in on some of the sub-threads and kind of figure some things out. It was just a lot of posturing. It was Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman standing around in Despero's lair, just threatening him and him threatening them and nobody doing anything. I thought uh, I had accidentally started reading X-Men Legacy again, actually. That's how bad it was. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Be sure to tip your comics, nerd. <laughs> Big Hero 6, number one, uh, maybe a miniseries, not a miniseries. This is a damn shame that uh, Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane's a miniseries, and this is not. Chris Claremont, hey, 20 years ago called. Uh, they said you were good then, but not anymore. This is very disturbing. Uh, you take Chris Claremont and his obvious trends towards fan service, and you take the entire idea of the manga genre and their notion of fan service. You take Chris Claremont fan service, manga fan service, mix it together, you have a fan service smoothie, which is what Big Hero 6 is. Giant mecha robots that turn into giant lizards in Japan. Smart little Asian boys wearing school uniforms going to school. It's very nice if you're a fan of Chris Claremont still, if it's very nice if you're a fan of manga still. If you've been waiting for, you know, if you've been clutching to your Chris Claremont X-Men, you've been clutching to your mangas, hoping that someday the two would meet. Right here. It's good stuff for you. Now for the rest of us, uh, it's... I mean, it's very predictable. There's two girls on the team, they're both wearing short skirts, they're both flirting with every guy in the place, there's little hearts flying, one of them wears cat ears. You cannot get more stereotypical American trying to be Asian than this book. And apparently it's an ongoing which hurts. And I like to show parts of it to Brad because it actually offended Brad when apparently the cover for issue two is an homage to Next Wave. Boo! <laughs> Skip the Big Hero 6. Unless you like that stuff. 
New ways to die. I know I keep talking about it, but come on, guys. If you're not buying this right now, I don't know what you're doing. Obviously, somebody's buying it because I'm trying to reorder it. I can't get copies back in here. This is my reading copy. Wall's empty behind it. Part four, it's amazing. It's still got that fun thrill ride. It's still got the interesting stuff going on. Menace meets Norman Osborn and starts dropping clues as to his identity. Is it Harry? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Blue Goblin, you uh, said that it's possibly Harry Osborn, I believe, when we were talking. It's very interesting. There's a lot of clues in there. You know, when I was thinking back to the discussion on the Hobgoblin and how uh, when they first were going to reveal the Hobgoblin, I believe it was Peter David had to go back and actually research and read all of the appearances of the Hobgoblin that were leading up to the revelation and putting it together and saying, okay, well, it's got to be this person was who they were hinting at, and they had to guess at who it was supposed to be. If I had to guess, I would definitely say Harry Osborn because the discussion with Norman uh, definitely mirrored that. Uh, you would think that he would have access to the Green Goblin technology, which is what he's using. There's some other stuff in there that's very interesting. I'm not going to give it all away. Meanwhile, Venom, Anti-Venom, Spider-Man, very interesting thing with the Anti-Venom stealing Spider-Man's powers. It's kind of been done before, but it's an interesting new twist because he can't really tell Anti-Venom that's going on and Anti-Venom doesn't really see it as a bad thing. He's kind of like, no, let me help you, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, no, stay away. Very interesting book. Again, I can't say enough good things. And John Romita Jr. on Spider-Man. Come on, there are few things in life sweeter than seeing John Romita Jr. draw Spider-Man. Really, any Romita draw Spider-Man. I bet John Romita Jr.'s daughter could draw Spider-Man really sweet. Color lines be all, you know, all over the place. Colors is like a crayon in the left hand. But, you know, I bet it'd still be compelling and I'd pay $3 for it. Lastly... Dear viewer, I have no way to convey to you this book. You forgot the segue. The Odd Squad. Uh, I, I wish I had footage of me trying to read this, because I opened it up and I actually got up from my chair and left the room. The first page. I just didn't even get a chance to like read any of the backstory, read any of the captions, the dialogue. It was just, what? And, and it continues. It's aptly named for being an odd book. Very aptly named. There's, uh, I don't mean to give away the secret, but I mean, oops, sorry devils do. There's a were beaver in here. Uh, <laughs> he's a naked man holding a shotgun at certain points. Uh, a character references being in her pajamas all day reading LOL cats. Uh, there's, I, I, it's so bad. I don't. I don't even know if I can hate it. Like I want to give it a bad review, but at the same time, like I'm turning the page and I'm like, Halle Berry in a bikini with wings like wasp. What? <laughs> and you've got 350, and you can't, you know, uh, you can't get into Grant Morrison's LSD trip. Get into this LSD trip, because you'll just be like. What? <laughs> it's strangely compelling. This is just terrible. It looks third rate. It looks like I could do it on Photoshop, you know? Any of these pages I could put together on Photoshop. I could letter it by myself. It just, it looks sloppy and hackneyed, which is very strange from Devil's Due. Because Devil's Due has seemed to raise their standards quite a bit, even though they still do publish Mercy Sparks and Josh Blaylock work. But still, <laughs> it's just, I don't have words for this. I'm trying to review it, and it's... It's certainly a unique experience. Uh, in fact, we've been tossing around the idea today that we hand this to people and we film them as they open it and see the naked men with a shotgun because it's just, it's mind blowing. Odd is aptly titled. If you've got 350 and you want an indie comic that's poorly put together, you know, in terms of exacting <laughs> precision, but will make you just stop and go, what? Like every page, this is your book. Um, if you need serious superhero stories and, and serious things, which I think this is actually trying to be, I uh, this skip this because it's not it's not the X Files meets the Ghostbusters, which is what the ads say. It is not that. It is far from that. It is what if uh, the X Files were uh, animated South Park style on YouTube with a Ghostbusters plot and pop culture references. And that, that doesn't even justify it. And also throw in the idea of a naked man holding a shotgun. Thank you. <laughs> That's it for this week. We'll be back next week. I don't have any exit after that. <laughs>